Today we're giving you 10 awesome drone photography tips guaranteed to take your photos to the next level. Now the good news is it doesn't matter what your experience level is or what kind of drone you're flying. I will be referencing my go-to these days, which is the DJI Mini 3 Pro. But as long as your drone takes photos, these are gonna work just fine. So let's dive into our first tip. It's the big one and it's about photography in general. It's all about the light. My first recommendation is to pick and choose when you shoot, preferably in soft light, beautiful light like the morning or in the evening time and avoid midday harsh sun or extreme low light. Now these sensors are quite capable these days, but they are limited. So pick and choose your best time, account for travel time and definitely use the most beautiful light possible for the most beautiful results. And here's a few more examples just showing you that basically the time of day is going to be just a huge factor and the light quality is going to make just such a dramatic difference in your photos. Here's some examples of the exact same location. We're very, very close and maybe just a little bit of time that passes between the time that these pictures were taken like here. And it could be a matter of literally 10 or 15 minutes. And definitely if you do have your drone up and batteries running low, if you think it might get a bit more beautiful out just as the sun sets or something, maybe consider bringing it down because I've been caught several times just leaving it up or trying to get the shot when it's just not quite the right time. Number two is one of the coolest aspects, if you ask me, about drone photography, and that's the ability to shoot down. We can get some incredible shots, some really interesting and creative shots out of our drone just by shooting down, looking down at things. It's a perspective that we can't normally get with most photography, and there's just a lot of really cool things to see when you point your drone downwards and shoot. So be creative. And the downward shots for me are some of my favorite. They're just really neat and unique, I think. So definitely play around with that and see what you can come up with. And here are a few more examples. Typically these things are not overly exciting regularly, but when you look at them top down, it just gives you a different perspective. And for me, that just makes them a lot more interesting. Here's an example of three shots edited several different ways. Now, if you are new to editing and you haven't quite found your style yet, make sure you check out my free preset pack download for you guys in the description. Number three is stay close and stay low. Now, of course, sometimes we just wanna get that thing up in the air and fly as far and as fast and as high as we possibly can, but that can be quite counterproductive. There's only so much battery and time is money, of course. By staying closer, you can actually get better shots most of the time I find. Before you even get this thing up in the air, look around and get an idea about what you want out of the shot. And by staying low, you can utilize depth in your image, including things like trees or buildings or hills and whatnot. You can just get just a better image a lot of the time. Now, of course, there's gonna be instances where you need to go really high or really far to get what you're looking for, but I find personally the majority of my best shots are taken when I'm relatively close and when I'm relatively low. So consider that to save time and again, get the best results. Next up is to shoot in raw photos. And the advantage of this is to draw a lot more information out of your photo than you can get with something like JPEG. Now they are bigger files and they require a bit more editing skills, which might sound a little bit intimidating, but I promise you, if you maybe learn later and have those files on hand, you're gonna be thankful. So sometimes you do have the ability to shoot in both JPEG and RAW at the same time. Yes, you're gonna need more space to store them, but you're gonna get a lot more out of your image. It's gonna help to preserve the highlights and the shadows and just give you a lot more flexibility in post. For me, RAW is something that I shoot about 100% of the time. And yeah, I want the best out of my image because you can never retake an image for the most part, especially landscape or nature. You can never retake that photo again. Once you take it, it's gone forever and you can never fully recreate it perfectly. Next up, number five is leading lines. Utilize leading lines to draw your viewer into your image towards your subject. Leading lines can take a mediocre photo and make it just fantastic and they can be quite difficult or kind of annoying to find sometimes but when you nail it it just looks fantastic once again it might be a little bit easier in some instances to stay lower to find them but you might find them shooting downwards as well so definitely keep an eye out for leading lines this is going to make a drastic impact on your photo quality and it's just awesome in general to have something that really draws your eye into the photo compared to something that just really doesn't, which is just there. 
So have a look if you can sh maybe shoot one with leading lines and one without and see which one looks better, go ahead and do that. But for me, leading lines are just a fantastic aspect of drone photography. Next up, number six is shoot HDR photos. And this means take several photos for the most part and blend them together to get a perfectly exposed image. Now, why we do this is because, again, our sensors can't quite capture every bit of detail, especially in the highlights and the shadows. You typically have to pick and choose what you want to expose for. By taking several photos with different exposures, we can then blend them together and get a really nice, vibrant, perfectly exposed image, and they just look fantastic, especially when it comes to landscape photography. Now, not every image needs to be an HDR image. It's more photos to store and edit and whatnot. But these days, a lot of drones are coming with the option to do it in camera. What you can do is actually bracket your shots like the Mini 3 Pro here. You have the option of shooting three or five at a time, and then it will blend those together to give you a great exposed image. Now, the downside of this in this drone is that you can only do it with 12 megapixel photos um, when it is capable of shooting 48 megapixel photos. I'm not sure why that is right now, but you can get around it by taking your own exposures at 48 megapixels and then combining them in post. Now, this is pretty much what I'm doing because I want the most detail out of my images and Getting into our next tip is shoot in panorama mode. Now, why would you want to do something like this? Well, think about it. If you take a photo and then take another photo and another photo and then stitch it together, you have a really high resolution photo, which you can then crop in or print and not lose a ton of detail. So shooting panoramic images gives you a lot more flexibility than shooting one image. Now again, these drones these days can a lot of the time do it right in camera. You just select panorama mode, it's gonna do it for you, and then put it together and give you one file. I find that they don't do the best job and by doing it in post later by yourself, you're gonna get a bit better results. But in this case, you can also add HDR panoramas and have a beautifully huge resolution, perfectly exposed image for print or for editing. And yeah, it's gonna be big and it's gonna take a little bit more time, but it's just gonna be a fantastic result. So absolutely, if you do see something beautiful and you can't quite fit it in the frame, either switch over to your panorama mode or just take several photos and move your drone, take it manually, and then see what you can come up with in post. Next up is take several photos of what you're looking for and just different variations, basically. You can move your drone up, down, left, right. That's the beauty of flying around. And by doing that, you can see what looks better for you later in post. It's a great way to nail yours personal style. Don't take too many, take a few, not 60 of the same thing with slight variations because you'll end up storing them and only editing a few. But yeah, it's a great way to really see what looks best for you and and this way you can learn better over time and ultimately have better results. Next up is composition. Now this is a big one in photography again, and composition is just a way of storytelling. It's about the principles and practices of making your image very pleasing to the human eye. And there's different rules that we can use. For example, the rule of thirds, which you may have heard of. This is just a great way to frame your photo or your image and just get it looking really, really good. That can be difficult sometimes when you can't see what you're looking at. So one tip is to do it in camera and you can do this by enabling grid lines in your drone view on your controller or on your phone. Now you can definitely do it with a few different options on the Mini 3 Pro here, but you can do it in pretty much every drone. You're just gonna have to go into settings and figure out how to turn those lines and those grids on. And that's gonna really help you to align your composition in a way that you might not have seen it otherwise. So composition is a huge factor in determining the overall quality, likability of your image for yourself and for others. But I also encourage you to break the rules as well. And at the end of the day, it is an art form. And if you like it, that's literally the only thing that matters. And finally, every great photographer knows how important it is to plan ahead. Now, before you get this thing up in the air, it's really important to have an idea or a vision about what you need out of the shot. And to have a shot list is a really good idea to save you time, to save battery, and again, to get the best results. Have a shot list or an idea about what you're looking for, if there's a specific building or a specific landscape or an altitude that you're looking for, a perspective. Have that already in your mind before you go out there and just wing it. You're gonna get a lot better results if you plan ahead. Also take into consideration things like travel time, weather, those things. Plan ahead and it makes a huge difference. Of course, some aspects of photography are complete luck, 
but it's better to be prepared and plan and then hope that luck shows up as well to get better results in photography. I'd also consider something like a checklist. For me, I am classically always leaving memory cards and batteries at home, and you've probably done that too, and it drives you absolutely insane. So to save your mind and your sanity, make sure you have a checklist and you plan ahead a little bit better than I do most of the time. So what do you think guys? There's 10 tips for you in terms of drone photography. I really hope they helped you out. Make sure you drop all your questions, your comments, and your favorite tips down there for everybody else and myself as well. I will drop a link with all my gear that I use in terms of photography and everything else in case you wanna check it out. There'll be affiliate links down in the description for you. Thanks so much for watching the video guys. I really hope you liked it. If you did, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button, join the community, and if you didn't, Make sure you tell me why so I can improve in the future. Anyways, let's leave it at that. Like always, make mistakes, be yourself, and get out there and take some more pictures. See you next time.